Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk Omni Channel Payment Overview and Processing. My name is Evan, and I'm your moderator today. We're broadcasting this web conference through Teams Live Events, and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. Today's session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation, and by participating in the session using Microsoft Teams, your name, email address, phone number, and or title may be viewable by other session participants. If you do not consent to being a part of a recorded session, please disconnect at this time. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the event, and we will have some time at the end of the event to speak to some questions verbally. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Now let's get started. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Ruben Delgado, Senior Program Manager. Ruben, over to you. Thank you, Evan. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. As Evan mentioned, I'm Ruben Delgado. I'm a Program Manager on the product team for Dynamics 365 Commerce. I'm joined today by uh, Principal, Principal Engineering Manager Reza Sadi. He'll be assisting us with responding to Q&A during the presentation. So today's tech talk is all about omnichannel payments in Dynamics 365 Commerce. Let's get started. So from an agenda standpoint, we'll start out with an overview. Um, up front, I'll tell you there's, there's another tech talk coming up on Tuesday where we'll dive deeper into the, the topic that we're discussing today. So uh, this will be sort of starting out at a higher level. And then as we go through this presentation, we'll get deeper into our omni-channel uh, strategy and capabilities. And then the next tech, tech top will be a little bit more on the technical side. So uh, as I mentioned, we'll start with an overview. We'll discuss the various channels, order types, and interfaces that help us accomplish omni-channel payments. Then we'll review how payments um, are, are supported from a, a channel standpoint and look at some of the differences between channels due to the nature of how business is conducted for each. Next, I'll outline supported scenarios to help you understand how payments are created, edited, and refunded across these different channels. Then we'll take a look at the anatomy of a BOPIS or buy online, pick up in store order. And uh, after that, we'll demo that and kind of see where, how all of those components are, are utilized uh, throughout that process. And finally, we'll touch on some things to consider when you're planning to deploy an omni-channel capabilities uh, for payments with Dynamics 365. So starting with our overview, uh, I wanted to describe our mission from, from a payments team. And so our goal is to support merchants who want to provide seamless, natural, and innovative payment options. This includes providing rich out of the box capabilities and an extensive well-documented SDK to help integrators deliver differentiated experiences that are as unique as the merchants they support. So uh, a few important things there. So the, the whole seamless, natural and innovative payment options thing is something that we really take to heart. Uh, as, a, as a product team, our mantra is sort of that the, the customer is the channel. And if you take that as a guiding principle, then you realize that uh, payments are, are a huge part of making your customer your channel, and you want them to be able to pay in ways that they expect to pay. Um, recently, we've been seeing a lot of sort of traditional online payments are starting to be utilized in the store, and that's um, I think that's a natural progression sort towards supporting the customer and how they want to conduct transactions and sort of making it all about them. So uh, after that, we have rich capabilities and out of box is really important to us to deliver an excellent experience um, just with all of the components that we provide as sort of by default. And after that, we have a well-documented SDK and we're always improving in, in all areas of the product, but documentation is something that we've been really focusing on the last few years. There are ever areas where we still need to improve, but this is something that um, we want to put out there and mention this is very important to us and we'll continue to deliver uh, more documentation to help our integrators. So moving on, first let's define the channels supported by Dynamics 365 Commerce. 
Out of box, uh, Dynamics Commerce allows for organizations to configure three specific channel types. There's physical stores, online stores, and call centers. Physical stores would leverage our Dynamics 365 Commerce point of sale application for creating and managing orders and their payments. Online channels take advantage of our Dynamics 365 platform for creating orders. And call center leverages the back office um, in within Dynamics 365 Commerce. You'll hear this called the Commerce Headquarters or Back Office. Um, some of you who've been around for a while might think of this application as Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. Um, essentially, that's our HQ or is our core ERP solution. So types of commerce payments by transaction. We've got two primary types of transactions and payments associated with those. First is cash and carry. This uh, you can think of as your typical point of sale transaction where a, a customer goes into a store, they select goods that they want, they pay for those goods and the payment is performed and the customer walks out with those goods. Uh, customer order is a little bit different. So where a cash and carry is sort of uh, uh, one single transaction that happens within a few moments, a customer order can take place over time. So. Uh, all of our sales orders created in the online or call center channels fall into this definition because there's a, a moment where an order is created that you add lines or products to that order, figure out the delivery for that order, whether it's a shipping pickup or a mix of ship and pickup or carry out in some cases. And, um, and then those orders or goods are fulfilled or that order is fulfilled. So customer order isn't uh, a quick clean, clean transaction like cash and carry. There's a fulfillment aspect there, and that makes the payments a, a little bit more, not necessarily complicated, but a little more involved. So um, within customer orders, there are a few things that make them sort of unique. For example, the card is tokenized, and we'll describe what that means later. And then uh, balance due is authorized. And later on, when that order is fulfilled, a payment is captured. And that's typically what at the time of invoicing. And we also can capture deposits for those orders. Uh, and we'll describe in some more detail later what that means. So we know what transaction types we have. Uh, as I mentioned, within a physical store, you can do your cash and carry transactions or customer orders. A customer order might involve a customer walking into a store, finding something that they like, but uh, they can't find the size that they want. So uh, what a store associate could do is locate that product in another store and create a custom, customer order, and at which point they're taking a payment from the customer and creating an order for that those goods to be shipped to the customer from another store or picked up in another store. Uh, next, we have an online store. That's a pretty much straight customer order scenario. And then call centers are also uh, primarily customer orders. So we accomplish all this through two payments interfaces. First is I named request handler. This is for the point of sale only, and it's used for physical terminal integrations. Uh, transactions which use a payment terminal are commonly referred to as card present. So you, if you hear me mention card present transactions, that means that uh, a customer is taking a, a payment card and tapping on a payment terminal or ins inserting the card in the payment terminal and uh, Th those payment details are being read from a, uh, a physical card or phone, right? So next we have iPayment Processor. This is used for e-commerce, call center, and a little bit less in point of sale, but it's uh, utilized in some ways. Um, this uses an iframe typically for card payment entry. It's not limited to an iframe, but if you think about the scenario where you're checking out in e-commerce and you enter your card details, um, that's what I'm describing here. So this is used for card not present payment operations. So when you hear me say card not present, you can think of iPayment processor and call center and e-commerce scenarios. So in the point of sale, this is primarily used for customer order creation, edits and pickups, and also linked refunds for customer orders, as well as uh, in some ways for cash and carry transactions. Um, so I'll move on from here. Now let's talk about channel payments. 
so tender functions in the back office. And if you think about, I just, I say the back office a lot. Um, when I talk about the back office or headquarters solution, that's where everything's set up. All of our reference data for our stores, um, payments, everything is kind of done in the ERP back office. So within the back office, we have these tender functions. And there are several types upon which our tender types are built. So first is normal and any cash or currency credit memo or voucher tender types are based on the normal tender function within the back office. Next is card and that's the basis for all of our credit card, debit card and gift card transactions or you can think of those as EFT transactions where there's a, a transaction taking place where we're calling a third party service to verify funds for the method of payment. Next is check, and that's a, just a traditional check. Um, doesn't seem so prevalent anymore, but um, there are certain industries where checks are still very heavily used. And customer is paying on customer account, if applicable. And you'll also see tender, remove, and float. That's for drawer operations only. I only mention that because it kind of stands out um, as, a, as a type there. And that's not a, a tender type for conducting transactions within the store day to day. Finally, we have a newer function called wallet, and you can think about this like credit, like our card function, but it's a little bit different in that it doesn't require a lot of the traditional attributes of a card transaction. So wallet payments don't have a bin range or um, bank identification number that comes with a credit card transaction, which used to be used as our primary primary way of taking an authorization response and locating the tender type that it belongs to. So while it's a little bit different in that it doesn't have bin range and also uh, you don't have things like an expiration date typically associated with these payment methods. So within the parlance of payments, you'll often hear about auth and capture. That just means uh, authorization and capture. So Credit card payments for customer orders typically use this model. A credit card payment is authorized for the balance due at the time of order creation, and then that payment is captured when the order is fulfilled. So you can think about the authorization as the, the promise to pay. At the time of authorization, the merchant is able to go and validate that the customer has the funds available to pay for this transaction. And then the capture process is when that order is fulfilled typically the merchant will make a capture call to the payment processor and that's the time when the funds move from the merchants or the customer's account to the merchant's account. So each of these transactions, each time we're calling out to a processor, there's typically a reference associated with that. And um, what that reference can be used for is it, a lot of things, but normally what, it, what happens is if some uh, a request is made to a processor and then we need to reference that request later on, we'll use this reference to call the processor and say, you know, hey, I'd like to perform a refund uh, for the transaction with this reference number. We'll talk more about how references are used later. And non-credit card payments can sometimes be described as captured immediately. Uh, basically what that means is when, when you pay for something with, like, for example, a voucher, that payment is captured or recognized as with a payment payment voucher in the back office immediately and there's no authorization then capture upon fulfillment. So as I mentioned tokenization this is specifically related to credit card payments or EFT style payments. Um, within if you think about the industry that we're in and the regulations around uh, PADSS and the fact that credit card numbers are very sensitive tokenization is very important to us. So what this means is essentially a customer provides their credit card in a fashion where it's only being sent to the processor and that credit card number never enters our system, but the processor provides us a token or a reference to that card number. So while the processor maintains that credit card number on their, on their, within their storage, uh, we just have a reference to that number. So we can call the processor and essentially use an alias for that card. And the data that we keep is innocuous. If someone got that 
uh, it wouldn't be very useful, but it allows us to reference a real credit card. So these tokens can be used to get new authorizations, like if an, an authorization expires on an order that takes a long time to fulfill, we can use these tokens to go and get new payments. Uh, they can also be saved with customer records to facilitate transactions through the call center. So a customer could call the call center and say, I'd like to make an order and you have my card on file and that token be, can be used to pay for that order. So let's talk about some more channel specific scenarios. Within the point of sale, as I mentioned, cash and carry is uh, you know, most common in a lot of cases. So all of those payments are immediate. Credit card payments are captured immediately or when the transaction's concluded. So depending on the processor and the, the connection to that processor, those credit card payments can be captured when they're added to a transaction, even if the transaction hasn't been concluded, or they can be authorized when you add them to the transaction and then captured at the conclusion of that transaction. For customer orders, we have the ability to take deposits. So if there's a customer order with a deposit, we capture that payment immediately. And then you can also designate a tender for uh, the remaining balance. So you'll see later on, actually my demo doesn't show this, but um, if you're creating a customer order in the point of sale, we prompt the, the cashier uh, to ask the customer if they would like to provide a card for the remaining balance. And when that happens, the customer inserts their card in the payment terminal, that card is tokenized and we authorize the remaining balance for that order and that payment is captured when that order is fulfilled. So there's also another option called pay the balance later. And what happens is that you create a customer order at the point of sale, no payment is designated for when that payment order is fulfilled and that order can be fulfilled in the back office and then there will be a balance on that customer's account. So I say careful with this in this slide because a lot of merchants don't want to do this. <laughs> So we have the ability to disable this in the back office. And in my next, in the part, sort of part two of this on Tuesday of next week, for that tech talk, I'll talk more about some of these configuration options and how to enable and disable these scenarios. For the online store, we have uh, the ability to capture loyalty and gift card payments as well as credit card payments. Loyalty and gift card payments are captured immediately that's the same for all of our channels. There's no auth capture. Uh, we just capture those funds and create a payment voucher immediately. For credit cards, when you're online, first we'll tokenize the card uh, when the customer enters their card details, and then we request an authorization as part of order creation. So today that's a two-step process, and we have a, a feature work coming in in 10.0.19 that will make this so it can be a single call if desired. So there will be one call where we request a token for the card and make the authorization request at the same time. And that will happen as sort of the very final step of order creation within call center, or excuse me, within e-commerce. So for call center, I might've been thinking ahead there. <laughs> For call center, we have something a little bit different where there's a thing called order completion and a sales order summary. So if you're familiar with the traditional dynamics AR uh, for finance and operations, you can create sales orders and there's not really a mechanism to assign uh, credit card payments and manage payments. There is, but it's not as feature rich as this. So within call center and to clarify call center is also traditionally considered as moto operations um, or mail order telephone order. So uh, if you think about uh, receiving a catalog in the mail, looking up items in the catalog, calling the number on the back of the catalog and reading the item numbers to the, the moto representative, um, this is one function of our, our call center, but it also really serves as a, a customer service uh, entry point for, for the back office. But um, I digress. For call center, we have a notion of order completion that's sort of a, a superset of the capabilities for base R, AR sales orders. And what this does is it ensures that orders have payments uh, designated for fulfillment. And uh, this supports multiple payments. And when you have a feature called omni-channel commerce order payments enabled, we turn on 
order completion by default. So for retailers, this is very common. They want to ensure that the order can't be created and fulfilled unless there's a card on file essentially for these orders. So this is what serves that function. Uh, when enabled, enabled, these call center orders cannot be edited in the point of sale. So if you have an order created in the back office with order completion and you recall that in the point of sale, you can't currently edit those orders. Um, that's that's a gap that we're looking to uh, fill um, in the near future. Hopefully it's not currently scheduled, but um, we understand that's a that's a point that people want to be able to um, perform or edit those orders in the point of sale. So call center has another thing called payments or prepayments. Uh, a payment is you can think about your traditional auth capture or we take the payment when the order is created and then when the order is fulfilled, we that payment hits the books, so to speak, or a payment voucher is created for that payment. Uh, if you turn on prepayment when you're adding an order in the call center, that payment is captured immediately. In the case of uh, credit card transactions, we actually ca capture that payment and a voucher is created for that payment. So that's a setting on the tender line when uh, the tender is added to the order. And um, I think uh, I think I covered most of that there. So move forward. So out of box, what do we what do we provide from a payment connector standpoint? And when I say payment connector, that means essentially think about we have our payments SDK and you have a payment processor and there needs to be some software in the middle that allows us to communicate with these payment processors. So that's what I say. I mean when I say connector. So out of the box, we have capabilities for connecting with Adyen and they're a Dutch payments company. And with our Adyen connector, we have a terminal integration for the point of sale or card present. And we also have e-commerce support, call center support and full omni-channel support. So this connector has been out there for a few years and we have uh, many customers using this connector for omni-channel capabilities today. Next, we have a PayPal connector that shipped in 10.0.14. This primarily is for wallet support in the storefront. And you can think about, uh, we, we allow you to create an e-commerce order, designate PayPal for the payment, and then when we're fulfilling in the back office or point of sale, we call PayPal to capture the funds for that order. So this uh, also supports linked refunds. So you can create an order in e-commerce, fulfill it, and then the customer might call the call center and say, I, I would like to return this order and we can perform the linked refund back to PayPal. Uh, same for Adyen. So our PayPal connector shipped uh, as a V1 in 10.0.14 and um, we're, so the primary point of mentioning that is it's newer and we're looking at expanding PayPal. So for example, right now we support PayPal wallet. In the future, we might add PayPal Express to have more of the checkout be performed um, through PayPal. Another important thing to mention, uh, so both of these have storefront integrations. We provide those e-commerce storefront integrations out of box, but uh, not everyone uses our e-commerce storefront. Some customers might just use our ERP solution and they import orders from a third party storefront. And this is totally allowed, this is totally fine. We have a lot of customers who will, might have a third party storefront, but they import their orders into Dynamics and they capture the funds, perform linked refunds, do all of the management of those payments within Dynamics. So um, just wanted to mention that. Supported payment scenarios. Uh, we have a pretty exhaustive list of omni-channel payment scenarios, but it's good to call them out and know what's supported for each of our connectors. So uh, buy online, pick up in one or more stores that's supported with both of our connectors. Same with buy online, ship to home. Buy in call center, pick up in one or more stores is supported through our Adyen connector only today. And the primary thing about that is if you think about PayPal and when that order is created, the traditional scenario is a customer enters their uh, their email and password for PayPal, and then PayPal provides an authorization back to the order. 
So in call center, the customer can't be authenticated. And so we don't have support for PayPal right now. Um, at least they can't be authenticated like they can in e-commerce. PayPal does have a billing agreement capability where a customer can uh, allow a merchant to uh, essentially tokenize their PayPal credentials and create new orders for those. Um, but we're, we haven't implemented support for that yet. So moving on, buying call center ship from home, ship to home, buying call center pickup at the same store, or buy in store uh, pickup at another store, buy in store ship from the same store, buy in store ship from another store, buy in store ship from a DC or non store, all supported. So um, I, I won't read all of these scenarios that we support. As I mentioned, it's exhausted. One thing that I mentioned previously. It's not supported and it's almost easier to call out what's not supported because there's really only one scenario and that's buy and call center. With the neighbor enable order completion set to true. And then editing or canceling that order in the point of sale. So as I mentioned, that's something that we want to support in the future. It's just uh, not supported today. So all of our typical uh, refund processing flows are also supported. So no matter what channel you, you buy your orders in, um, you can return your orders in a different channel. So one thing that's called out with an asterisk here is we don't support initiating a return order in e-commerce yet. Uh, that's something that's also not, uh, on the roadmap, but um, today you can't log into e-commerce, look at your order history, and say, I'd like to create a return order for this particular order or product. So next we'll we'll talk about at a high level some of the components that we leverage to create these buy online pickup and store scenarios. So starting out, since we're talking about buy online, um, the, the first thing we would talk about is the storefront that's used to render the online shopping experience. When a customer navigates to the checkout as part of uh, rendering the checkout, the commerce scale unit returns the URLs for the configured payment processors. So customer navigates to checkout. When we're pulling up the checkout page, we figure out what URLs we need to call to, to create the payment. So those URLs are called the payment gateway returns, these objects that are used to add your credit card details. And then once the customer provides those details, those are added to the order. And when they click place order, we get the token from the payment gateway and we authorize the transaction and then an order is created in the back office. Or in, excuse me, in the channel database. So the order sits in the channel database and then periodically that data is synchronized to the back office. And I say periodically, you could set you know, the frequency to be every minute if you wanted. There's also some capabilities to do real time order syncs to the back office, though we recommend putting these on a on a schedule. But that data that chat order is synchronized from the channel database to the the ERP or headquarters database. From there it can be edited in the call center. Uh, it can be fulfilled through the distribution center. Or someone can retrieve that order using the real time service. In, for example, in the point of sale, if a customer comes in to pick up an order, the, the real time service is used to call and look up the order, return it to the point of sale, and perform fulfillment. So, with that really high level overview of these components, next we can step into a demonstration and see sort of how all of these things come together in a, in a, a real ish world scenario. So before I start, I'll just refresh my pages here. OK, so in this scenario, I'm maybe I'm I'm Ruben, right? I'm flying from Seattle to San Francisco for an important meeting. And while I'm on that flight, I realized that I forgot a tie. And I think a tie would really complete my ensemble. So I navigate to the Fabricam storefront and order a tie. I know there's a Fabricam store uh, between the airport and where my meeting is. So that'll be pretty convenient for me. So I find this black skinny tie that would look really good with the shirt I'm wearing. So I'll, I'll select this tie. 
and add it to my bag. And now I'll specify that I would like to pick this tie up. Specify that I want to pick it up in the San Francisco store. So now I'm designated for pickup at store and I'm satisfied with my purchase and I'll go through checkout. So now I'll provide some uh, billing details. So and I'll use my card on file. So now I'll place my order. And you can see, I uh, click place order a little too soon. You could see there that the credit card token had already been obtained by the time I clicked place order. So now I've got my order confirmation. And just if you're ever demoing this, it's good to note that confirmation ID. It can help to locate the order later on, especially if you're in a system where a lot of people are performing demos. But um, for today, what I'll do is I'll force that synchronization of this order to from the channel database to the headquarters. As I mentioned, this I think in this environment, it's set to happen every five minutes, but I'll just uh, manually run this job now. And um, this job, this P job, that's the job that uploads transactions from the channel database up to the headquarters. We have other jobs that will push out reference data or configuration data, uh, merchandise, customer data out from the headquarters out to the channels. And um, this one's sort of unique where it pulls that data, the transaction data back up. So let's check the progress of this job. Looks like it's completed, great. So now I'll perform this sync orders function. And also this is something that I'm running manually, but normally this would run behind the scenes and you wouldn't need to do this unless you're uh, doing a demo. So I'll synchronize that the transaction from the channel database to the headquarters. Is, uh, that transaction data has been synchronized. Now this is creating the order and putting it in a format where I can further edit it. Now let's check to see if my transaction's here. So here's my confirmation. It starts with E41. So there's my transaction E41. And you can see here it now has a sales order number in the back office 012890. Okay, so back to the scenario. I've created my order. By this point, I've landed. Uh, I'm I'm waiting for a car in San Francisco. And um, what I realize it's is it's hot and sunny in San Francisco. I wasn't expecting this. So as I'm as I riding in my car to go downtown for my meeting. I think, you know what, I'm going to Fabricam anyway to pick up my tie. Maybe I'll just add a hat to my order. And so I'll call the Fabricam call center. The customer service associate looks up my account. And they say, oh yes, I, you did create an order here. I see it. And I tell them, I, I would like to add a hat to my order, please. So they'll bring up the details for my order. And they can say, okay, yes, I see you You ordered a black skinny tie. Do you know what your hat or what sort of hat you would like to add to your order? And then they click this modify function on the order. Bear with me while I refresh the order screen. Okay, so they click modify. Now the order is in a state where I can add a line to the order. And I tell them, yeah, that w what I saw was um, it was a, like a gray fedora hat. The person happens to know that, yeah, this is my 98048, the gray classic fedora. And what size do you wear? I tell them my hat size. And I mentioned, so I'm, I'm going by the store anyway. Would you designate that for pickup at the store? So I say, yes, I can do that. It should be ready by the time you get there. So they specify where this needs to be picked up. And then they say, is that all? I say, yes, thank you. You've been very helpful. And so they go through the order completion screen that we described previously. And the person says, would you like to also put the, the hat on your card? 
and it, this card ends in one 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 one. And I think, oh no, I, that's my that's my corporate card or my business card. I don't, I shouldn't make a purchase on that. Can you change it for me? And they say certainly. So this person can remove that card from the transaction. And so that removes the card. It reverses that authorization for that card, and now I can add a new payment method. So I'll say, hey, I have a personal Visa card that I'd like to use. Might as well get points while I'm at it. So the call center person pulls up this screen and forgive this the stretching here. And I tell them my credit card number, expiration date, and CVV. And this, what you see in here is an iframe. So this data is not entering dynamics. These are uh, uh, JSON objects provided by Adian in this case. So in this way that the data never enters the scope of our product here. I'll click OK. So now that card data is sent to Adian and they return a token. And part of that token is the last four digits to help me recognize which card I paid, or which card was used for the transaction. So the payment is for 100%. Now I'll click OK to add that payment to the transaction. So while that's happening, we can go look at the add in portal and see, inspect our payments there. So here's, you can see the original payment I provided for my tie, and that's already canceled. Back here, we've added this tender line to my order, and I'll click Submit. At this point, that order will be uh, updated in the back office, and a new authorization will be requested for, uh, for my personal card. Okay, it hasn't shown up yet, but um, it will be there. We'll go back later and look at that uh, payment that's been fulfilled. So moving on, um, I'll go to the point of sale. Now I arrive at the store, say, hi, my name's Ruben, and I have an order for pickup. So the store associate will recall that order. Now you might have seen other tech talks where Holly shows some of our cool new order fulfillment flows. Um, for this, I'll, I'll use the, sort of legacy flow, uh, I might say. So I add my name, store associate searches for my orders. Okay, I see it, 012890. You can see I'm a, I'm a really good customer of Fabricam. So they say, okay, you'd like to pick up, looks like you have a black skinny tie and a classic gray fedora, and I confirm that. And then they click pick up. So, and when when the order was retrieved, we didn't only retrieve the lines for that order or the products that I'm buying. We also retrieved the payment details for that order. So at this point, the store associate saying, OK, it looks like you already have a, a card designated for this. Would you like to use it? And I say yes. So it takes that authorization that's already been provided. I see that there's no, there's no amount due because the payment's already been authorized. So store associate basically just has to close the order at which point we go and capture the payment for that order and update the order in the back office. So navigating back to the order in the back office, you can see I haven't refreshed. So my order is in an open order state with the authorized payment. Now I'll refresh, status is changed to invoice and my payment status is paid. So back in the add-in back office, I can see this new payment for 194.15. Uh, That's for the full amount. At this point, it might just be in an authorized state, but uh, very soon, if I refresh, this will status will change to be sent uh, sent for settlement or settled, and that is basically the life cycle of that transaction. So, going back to the anatomy of a BOPUS order. Now that we've seen that flow, we can think about it a little bit more depth. So you saw the payment was created in the back office. 
we called the payment gateway or the payment service to uh, pull up an iframe, tokenize the card, then authorize the card. The order was created in the retail tail channel database and synchronized to the headquarters. The call center user pulled up the order, made an edit, changed the actual payments on that order. And then uh, in the store, the store representative or store associate recalled the order using real-time service APIs. They pulled the order into the point of sale, captured the payment for that order, and I walk off with my goods feeling dapper, ready for my meeting. So that concludes that demo. So some other things to consider before we wrap up. Um, when you're when you're testing omni-channel payments, uh, there, as I mentioned, it's it's easier to almost mention the things that we don't support at this point than the things that we do support. So uh, you want to ensure that your channels share common payment methods so you don't run into conflicts. So for example, if you create an online order and you pay with loyalty, and then you try to edit that order in a call center channel that doesn't have a loyalty tender type, then that would be a problem, right? So when we enable these features, we perform some checks to make sure that your payment setup is consistent across your channels, but that's kind of the secret for making all of this work. Next, a, a payment created in call center that's of type customer account. If you create that call center payment or order with and pay with customer account, when you recall that in the point of sale, the point of sale will still think that there's a, an amount due because there hasn't been an actual payment made on that customer account. So um, that can be a little bit confusing. Um, you can still pay with customer account at that point, but it's that's one scenario that we could um, we could clean up and make a little bit more seamless moving forward. And again, something that has come up uh, recently is order cancellation. So if you create a call center order, especially if you're paying with a payment type of normal, um, so think about that scenario, you're a call center user and you create an order and you pay with it with cash, right? You pay cash and then if you want to later cancel that order, what happens is whatever payment you add to cancel that order needs to be marked as a prepayment. And the reason for that is when you cancel an order, it never gets invoiced. So the vouchers associated with the payments for that order are never created. But when you mark those offsetting payments as prepayments, then those payments will offset. Um, if you attend the next session, um, we'll get a little bit deeper into these uh, or uh, these omnichannel payment flows, and that'll start to make a little bit more sense. But that was just one thing that sort of happened recently, and we'd like for people to avoid that. And at the future, in the future, we'll likely do some things in the product to help prevent this from happening. So um, I would like everyone to plan to attend the next the, the next tech talk around omnichannel payments. That's a Dyn 916 PAL. And that's Tuesday, uh, February 9th at 7 a.m. or 2 p.m. Pacific. And in that talk, we'll be discussing uh, a complete comprehensive list of payments features, how to set up payments in the back office, and so we'll talk through some of the features that you should enable for the best experience. Uh, we'll go through more full omni-channel flows and demos. We'll discuss specific interfaces and implementations that enable these omni-channel payments. And that's sort of um, from the SDK standpoint to help people understand how they might implement their own payment connectors. And um, with that, I'll, we're, we'll move into Q&A. Uh, before I turn it over to Evan, I just want to mention some of the additional resources here. So as I mentioned, here's the next talk around omnichannel payments configuration. Please do check out these past talks. Um, omnichannel order management flows is very good and that really should, should be required reading basically before this session, but that one's happened last week, I believe. That one's very good. And some of the articles, so we've got uh, customer orders overview, uh, processing customer order pickups, uh, Omnichannel commerce payments. This is, as I mentioned, there's a, a feature that we introduced last summer that sort of ties all of this together. And this gives you some good in-depth documentation around how we do omnichannel payments. And then we have extensive documentation for our out-of-box connectors for Addian and PayPal, 
And don't forget, to please be engaged in the Yammer groups and commerce forums. So I, with that, Reza, um, should we go to Q&A? Do we have anything lined up there? Um, no, we had only one question lined up that we answered. Other than that, no other questions currently pending. Unless folks okay. have them, we can answer anything that comes up. Okay, great. So I think with that, um, I'll turn it over to Evan. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to joining you again uh, next week on Tuesday for the follow-up session. Perfect. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, if you do have any questions, go ahead and submit them through the Q&A panel. We can answer those for you. Uh, in the meantime, we would like to get your feedback on today's session. I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We value your feedback and welcome your input on how we did today and what you would like to see in future sessions. That survey scores on a scale from one to five, with five being the highest score possible, and we thank you for your participation in that. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenter, Ruben, and a thank you to our audience for logging in and joining us today. Please stay safe and have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. Bye-bye.